Today we're going to be talking about my perspective on how to do backside airs and Al, he's going to give us his perspective on how to backside air as well. I think the first tip to backside air is you want to know how to do backside ollies. And backside ollies, somebody once told me do nothing and it sounds really weird and simple but it really is doing nothing. It's just lifting your board and churning like there's imaginary transition there even though there is no transition there. You got any tips for backside ollie? Uh, just like Dowdy was actually saying, Zachary Dowdy. Um, he was saying just do nothing. That kind of goes if you have quarter pipe slowly gathering to vert, because that's how gravity works. You're gonna go up there with certain speed, and you lift up, your body's slowly coming out of the transition, board will follow, shoulders lean, and you just catch air. That's a perfect way to get started with backside airs. That and just doing kick turns and grabbing your nose. Oh, gives you a good uh gives you a good sense of where the where to grab the board, you're just ready for it. And from there, you can kind of start lifting up if you want and catch a little air. But what you want to do is let the board come to your hand eventually. It's just a good starting point. Mm, that's good, yeah. I think doing kick turns and grabbing your nose is almost like pretending to backside air. And I'll do that a lot of times if I'm scared of backside air, just kick turn and grab the nose. And then when you actually start doing backside air, it's pretty much that. But you're just grabbing the nose for longer and longer depending on how high you get. Exactly. The other thing that somebody once told me that I think is a good help is instead of reaching for the nose of your board when you're trying to learn backside airs, don't reach for your nose, but bring your nose to you. And I think Al did say that, but basically you want to scrape off the coping and kind of lift your board up. And when you're lifting your board up, it's going to come to your hand naturally. And if your hand is in the right place, then you can grab it versus reaching down to it because then it's really hard to land the trick. You got any tips on landing the backside air? Because I'm backside still learning that. Is, uh, it's very important just to because you're gonna be grabbing with your lead hand, whether you're regular or goofy, you're gonna be leading with your shoulder. So I'm regular, I'm gonna be leading with my um, left shoulder. I'm gonna do backside air. You gotta make sure your uh, shoulder's pointed where you wanna land, feet will follow. You gotta be steady over the board. You just wanna have control over it. Sometimes leaning too far forward, you'll fall forward. Um, you wanna make sure you're past the coping so you don't hang up. And uh, you know, just it's a lot of commitment. You know, um, with backside airs, I learned from my airs. I did take a few slams, but that's skateboarding. You know, you learn from your slams, you prevent it from happening the next time, and boom, before you know, it, you learn the trick. I think the last tip we can give you a perspective on how to do backside air is the, the your feeding position on the board. Uh, I think it's good to have your feet pretty spread out and have your back foot really across the whole tail, so you have a lot of room to land on. I tend to like move my foot a lot on the back and I'll have it off the edge of the board and then I land even farther off the edge. So your foot is gonna shift on the back. So just keep that in mind. You got any tips for the stance? Yeah, this is what I, I try to do. You wanna have good placement on the back foot. The back foot likes to slide sometimes off the end because you're going backside. So back foot might go like this. So you just wanna have a good solid foot placement at the back foot. The board is gonna, you're gonna like slowly come up to the coping. So simultaneously, you know, you slightly bend down, board's there and then, Boom, backside air. Yeah, you can almost pretend to do them on the ground. Yeah, pretend to do them on the ground, get the idea. And you can, you can also do them over hips. I learned backside airs over hips before flat wall, and sometimes that can enable you to not do them and churn them all the way, so be careful with that. But learning them over hips will build your confidence. Yeah, it's an easier way to catch some air time. Um, hips, you know, it's kind of like a launch ramp in a sense. Just stay to the wall and you'll go from quarter pipe to quarter pipe. Yeah, you don't have to worry about churning up and down on a hip. You can just get used to the grab, but when you start doing back stairs, then you're kind of wanting to make sure you get that 90 degrees turn. 90 degree turn, make sure you kind of scrape the tail a little bit. Scraping the tail is very important. Sometimes it won't give you the initial lift off, so scrape the tail, suck your body up, and turn, and boom, there you go. number one hack to uh, skating transition? Confidence. 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 And how do you build confidence? By taking slams and, you know, getting up and doing it again. It's just the shit, you just, it just takes time. You know, you gotta slam, you gotta bail slams, you gotta, you gotta fall, you gotta build a fall portfolio. And, you know. <laughs> fall portfolio, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
That was wild. Yeah, here. Memo, baby. But you know what's fun about it? It really gives you the butterflies. It gives you that adrenaline boost that all of you young thrill seekers are looking for. And that's what we do out here when we're building DIYs. We have fun. And you know, we're, we're living on the edge. That was on the edge. That was on the edge.